Good evening. My name is Greg Funderburg, and so many people know me in the Chattanooga community as the guy that's on the news, or who was on the news. The TV guy, the news guy. I would speak at schools, I would speak at churches, I would go to civic organizations and talk about all types of things. And one of my favorite parts of my job was reading books to local kids in the schools. What people don't know about me is, for many years leading up to 2018, I was battling in silence. I never told too many people. Some of my closest friends knew. But in June 2018, I was spiraling out of control. I was going on television and smiling and pretending that I was happy. I would go out in public and smile and take pictures with people and pretend that I was happy. But I would go behind the scenes at my station where I was working in Chattanooga before the show, and I would cry. I would cry going to work. I would cry in the bathroom. I would put on my TV makeup and walk out on the set and smile and be happy. What people didn't know was Greg Funderburg was battling depression and thoughts of suicide. In 2018, in June, I met this lady. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were at an event, and we happened to be at the same table. I had met her several times before, but we never really got a chance to have a conversation. But this time, we had a true in-depth conversation about life, about careers, about my goals, and so many other things. I later asked her, I said, can I talk to you sometime? Can I call you sometime? And she said, sure. And she gave me her number. So I gave her a call, and I showed up at her house. That began a relationship I never knew I needed. When I think about this particular woman, she poured so much into my life. But when I also think about her, she was one of those people who I could talk to about any and everything in the world. Her name was Ernestine Carter. Many people knew her as Mother Carter. Some people knew her as Grandma Tina. I remember the first time going to her house thinking I had hit the jackpot. I had won the lottery because I walked into her house and I sat down at her kitchen table. And I remember sitting at her table and I was sitting there for a moment and she said, son, what do you want to talk about? I started talking, and that's when she looked at me and took her glasses off like the old ladies would do, and she said, son, that's not why you're here. I was shocked. In that moment, the hairs on my arm stood up, and she proceeded to say something, and it shocked me to my core. She said exactly what I was going through. That began a series of conversations at the kitchen table. When I think about those conversations, those conversations change my life. So when you think about therapy, some people may say, well, Greg, why didn't you go to therapy? Why didn't you go to see a life coach? I tried a life coach. I tried therapy. I tried other therapists. It just didn't work for me. None of those people resonated with me. But when I walked into her house, I felt a sense of calmness and peace. She allowed me to open up week after week after week. I took all of my emotions and poured them out on her kitchen table. It was at that table we had a number of conversations about life, about sadness, but more importantly, how to pull yourself out of that dark place. When I think about Mother Ernestine Carter, she taught me four principles when it comes to pulling yourself out of that dark place. When I was sitting at her table, many times, when I would pour myself out to her, I remember one time, I had been at her table for four hours, and I said, I've said enough, I'm gonna go home, thank you so much. And she looked at me with a stern look, and she said, I don't think you've been dismissed yet. <laughs> So I sat back down. We went on for four more hours, eight hours total, 
of talking about everything under the sun. But when I think about her and what she taught me, she taught me four principles that I like to share with you. The first thing she taught me was the power of saying no. For so many years, working in the public eye, you smile, you go to events, and you take pictures, and you shake hands, and I always would say yes. She taught me the importance of finally standing up for myself and saying no to something I really didn't want to do. The second thing she taught me was the importance of going out in nature. When she told me to go out in nature, I'm looking at her like, really? <laughs> Greg Funderburg does not do the outdoors like that. <laughs> the funny thing about that was a friend of mine came to me a few weeks later and she says, hey Greg, I'm going on a co-ed hike. You wanna come? And I said, you know what? I'll go. Because Greg Funderburg does not do snakes, don't do bugs, I don't do any of that. But when I got outside in nature, I could feel the crisp air on my skin. I could see the trees blowing in the wind. I took a moment to see the birds chirping and flying around the area and hearing the waterfalls in the background. It was so serene, it was so moving, and it put me in a really good place. The third thing she taught me was the importance of exercise. And one thing I can tell you about Ernestine Carter, she would always tell you, you need to start making sure you're taking care of yourself. And so I started going to the gym and working out. And like I tell people, it is a process. There is no such thing as a diet. It is literally a healthy lifestyle. But the most important thing she told me, whenever you feel like you are about to fall off the wagon with your fitness and health, you can always get back on. The last thing she taught me, the importance of truly believing in myself. For so long, I had always felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I was not the person that I needed to be. And I always felt like I needed to do more or change something about myself to succeed or do other things in my life. But she looked at me one day and she said, you are perfectly the person that you are supposed to be. When I think about those conversations at the kitchen table, the most important thing that I did during that time, week after week, I showed up. So many people go to therapists, so many people talk to different people, and they feel like, I can't get anywhere. But you really have to apply yourself and work hard to pull yourself out of that place. And so when I tell people to pull yourself out of that place, you just have to literally show up every day. Even though you feel like you can't go, just show up and have the conversation. The biggest part of my relationship with Ernestine Carter, I could be open, I could be honest, and I can talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. Because she would listen with no judgment and give me some sound advice. When she talked about believing in yourself, she told me I have to keep pushing and never give up on my dream, no matter when it gets hard. In 2022, I had worked at a station for nine years four months, one week, and one day. <laughs> In that time, four a couple months before the end of my contract, I remember saying, I don't think I can do this anymore. I'm ready to close this chapter of my life. In August of 2022, I went to Ms. Carter and I said, what do you think? Should I stay? Should I move on? And she looked at me and she said, I have given you the tools of life. Now it's up to you to use the tools and the messages I gave you and make a bold decision and always believe. So I left her house thinking, well, darn, I cannot even get an answer. <laughs> but I thought about it, I meditated on it, and I took a belief in myself and I just jumped out of the plane, so to speak. And I knew the parachute would come out. So I jumped and made a decision and said, I'm leaving. In November of 2022, I wrapped up a nine year television career in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a career that I loved. A year ago this week, before I ended that journey, 
in that position, I remember messaging Ms. Carter on Facebook and I said, hey, I just wanna tell you thank you for all you did for me and pulling me out of that dark place and helping me to make the biggest decision of my life so far. She wrote back to me and she said, always remember the principles that I taught you for now and forevermore. A week later, I walked out of a job with no anticipation of where I was gonna go next because I was still deciding what was gonna be next in my life. But I had a lot of belief in myself that it all happened the way it was supposed to be. It was truly divine intervention that I walked away from the job because two weeks later, her health took a turn and she was declining. And on Christmas Eve, she passed away. I share her story because in my life, I have battled, like I said earlier, depression and thoughts of suicide. But I want to encourage each of you here today. Life is worth living. If I would have made a decision in June 2018, I would not be here today on this stage. So I want to encourage you today. Find someone you can confide in. If it's a therapist, a counselor, or whoever, find someone you can trust and you talk to that person. Be open, be honest, and just talk. Those kitchen table conversations changed the entire outlook of my life. And when I think about Ms. Carter, some people may say, this has got to be a sad discussion to talk about because you're approaching the one year anniversary of her passing. I am not sad. I rejoice and I'm happy because she left me with so many tools. And tonight, I get to share that on this stage with all of you. So I want to encourage you today. Find you an Ernestine Carter today. If that's a therapist, a counselor, or if you're in a situation where you feel like you are on the verge of making a decision, you don't have anybody to talk to, you can always call the suicide hotline, 988. You can text, you can call. That line is available 24-7, seven days a week. I'm Greg Funderburg, and I am here today because of Ernestine Carter pouring into my life. And I'm so grateful that I have been allowed to share her story important to all of your lives tonight. Thank you.